Welcome back everybody. In the last one we deployed our application to Heroku. Now we are going to go ahead and start building out the registration. About the registration, we are going to try to build in all the common features you would find in, in the normal user registration flow. One of them is going to be ability to asynchronous write data usernames against the database. So for example, if I came in here and typed Christ truly, you would see that this name is already taken, but if I use the another username, we would see that uh, the username is a variable. So doing something like this, we'll do the same thing for the email. So an email like uh, this one, gmail.com. Okay, so let me see now I can use a, a different one. So we'll, we'll learn how to do this using Ajax and then make calls to our server and return them in real time just so we can improve on our user experience. So I'm also going to show you how to implement this show password toggle functionality. For example, you can show and hide it. Okay, so looking at our, at our project here, I'm going to start out, start it out. So I have broken it down into different sections. So first we are going to start by setting up the, the registration form and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm in my VS code here. So previously we set up the, the authenticate the base auth wrapper. So this will contain all our pages for, for authentication. So first things first, if if we let me start out the server here. Okay, so I've run my migration. So if you guys have like some red warnings there, please make sure you run Python. Uh, let's see, Python manage the py migrate. Run this one first, then now you can run your server. You should have a, you should, it, it should be clean like mine here. So if I come now to the application, you can see we have that landing page. Then now if we go to our registration page, so it's on authentication slash register. So if you come here, you can see we have this page, which is not properly designed. So one of the first things I want us to do is remove this this line on top and then put everything in the middle and we pick up from there. So if we look at our base auth, I want us to remove all this bootstrap markup and only remain with the main such that only the content we add will only be the one in, in the main. So I'm going to remove these glasses here. Also these ones, uh, these ones too. Okay, so now we are only remaining with the main that has all our like child pages here. Okay, so if I reload it, you can see that the, the top is now going in somewhere. So if we go to to our registration template, so you see we extend from the base auth template, meaning we get access to to all this in the header, we get access to to all this JavaScript. So here, first thing I'm going to add the form. So now the way we are going to do that is in here we are going to create a row using bootstrap so row and then I'm going to have three columns so it's going to be md they're going to be three so I can use this syntax here so the second one I wanted to take off like six columns so one is going to have three columns the last one has three columns then we are going to work in the middle one okay so here now we can define our card so card okay then inside I'm going to have a card or a card title, a div that will have a card title. So here I'm going to put so like an H4 and say register for a free account. Okay. So now down I'm going to set up a form. So form, of course we need an action. So it should be form actually. So form see we can pick get post so it's going to be a post it's going to that the method is going to be post because we want to post to the server then now in here we can define our pages so we want the email the username and the password and then the, the submit button and the show the toggle the toggle text so to create the, the email one so we are going to make an input but in, in Bootstrap, you can wrap all the inputs in a form group, and that gives it some good styling out of the box. So we make a div called form group. Form group. So in here, we can define an input. So it's going to be input email. Then the class is going to be 
it's going to be form control so form control okay so you see now that gives us this input field so I'm going to change the name I'm going to give it a name so name is going to be email then I'm also going to give it an ID just so we can select it in the JavaScript so the ID is going to be email field so I will show you how we use it later so let's do the same thing for the password and the username so I, I want the username to actually be on top so I'll put it here then I'll rename this the type to be text the name to be username and the ID to be username okay username field okay oh I lost my oh I got it actually okay cool okay so I want them to be a bit small so I'm going to add from control sm control sm okay so I'll duplicate it here we need to add like press holders for just so a user knows what to type there so the press holder here is going to be username okay that's fine here it's going to be email okay so now we need to set up the submit button but before we set it up we need to set up the pass the, the password input so it's going to be the same form group so this is going to to now be type password by default then the name password so this is going to be password 2 okay so the id is going to be password field so i can do that okay then the input to submit can be input input not input input type submit uh huh so input let's see input submit the value so here the value is going to be you can say register register okay so there we need to give it an we need to so now we need to give it a class so class here it's going to be btn just so it can look good so btn btn block just so it takes over the whole screen and yeah so i think uh, this can be it now we need to set up the out uh, like uh, this should be outside actually so bring it outside this button input group so inside the input i'm also going to set up the text to show the toggle text so i'm going to say show in here so for it to be on the right i'm going to just float it to the right so i'm going to say class equals float right float right like that so now if we take a look i'm going to reload it you can see that we have a form and things are not looking great but uh let's see how we can make it better so this these inputs are actually fine although the form is say, quite uh wide but let's see how we can make it better so first things the first thing that we can do now is make sure it is smaller here uh, so to do that i'm going to make this one four the other one four even the one in the middle four okay so four 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 so now that should make it a bit smaller if we want to push it to the bottom we can look at the form itself or even the row and then push it down to like mt5 that gives it margin on the top uh, reload you can see it's now on the it's now down looking at the title we basically need to close it out here so close it out for some reason we didn't i'm not sure if we have some other close tag so if we reload here oh uh, okay so let me see this is in a card then we have a card title okay so this here should be in a, a card body i'm going to define card body okay then i will move this one down to the end of the form up to here okay so if i reload you can see that right now it's it's quite better so this the button needs to be blocked and i'm going to give it a color so this is btn primary okay that should give us a background so let's see let's look at it now that looks better i would want this to come to the to the center let's see if there's something we can do real quick class equals card title card title 
Okay, so I'm going to move it to the body. I'm guessing it's going to to give us some padding. Okay, so so this is this is a lot better now. So we are going to work with this for now. But if you want to give like some space on this show because it's very stuck to each other, then we can come into show. Then we can give it like some padding. So py like five. That's going to give it some space. But that's a lot anyway. So py two should be fine. Reload it and uh, uh, let me just increase it to three. Okay, so here I'm also going to give it some space a bit. So let's see from the title, this will be the title. We can give it some padding, so let's give it three. Three, okay, reload. Okay, so this looks a lot better and we are going to work with this. So the next video I'm going to be showing you how to implement the asynchronous username validation. So we will talk about great stuff like JSON. So I'll see you then. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel just so you can keep in the loop. I'll see you guys in the next video.